Hello there, we're going to keep going on with our uh, Microsoft SQL Server boot camp today. We're going to talk about the basic select statement. So, before we do that, I want to talk a little bit more about SQL Server Management Studio. This is a great tool that can be used to work with databases. So, we looked last time at how you connect to a database. We looked at how you restore a database. And I want to just talk a little bit about the user interface that you have here. So here on the left, we have something called the Object Explorer. And this lets us um, look at the different objects that are, in the, that are in any particular database. The top node is the database server itself. So you could have multiple databases in here. We only have one right now, which is the AdventureWorks 2014 database. If we expand that, we can look and see the different tables that exist in this database. We're going to be working with one of these tables here in just a few minutes. But there's also other things. Um, stored procedures would be found in here. User-defined functions, views. Anything that's that you can have in a database would be found here and you could work with it. So we, ha we have an editing window which can be invoked by simply typing or by pressing new query that will open up an editing window here we can type in SQL statements or SQL commands and hit the little execute button right here or hit the F5 key and it will execute that statement against the database that we've selected and you select the database right here with this little pull down so if we had multiple databases here, we'd pick the AdventureWorks one to make sure that that was the one that we were working with. You also can save whatever's in this window. You can just select File, Save, As, and you give it a name, and it'll just save it as a .sql file, and all it is is a text file. And then you can open that up later and, and open it from here. Um, open File and open that back up. So this is just a normal editor. You can think of it almost as an integrated development environment for SQL Server. So with that, let's jump back to our slides. Let's talk about the select statement. So the select statement, uh, we're going to start with something really simple and we'll build up over time with some other videos about the different things that you can do with select. Select allows you to select essentially what data you want returned from the database. And the data could come from one or more tables. For this first video, we'll just do this from one table, but you'll see in subsequent videos how we can bring data back from multiple tables with a single select statement. Here's the basic form. Now there's a lot more to a select statement than what I'm showing here, but this is just the basics and a beginning, uh, a beginning place for us to start. So we have the keyword select, and you can make that all uppercase or all lowercase. SQL doesn't care about case sensitivity in most cases. Uh, with SQL Server, it's common for us to uppercase uh, the keywords, and in this case, a keyword is select. And then we list the columns that we want to select, and we can have one or more and those can be comma delimited so if you have multiple columns you would put a comma in between each one and then you have the keyword from and then the then what table you're going to pull the data from and again this is much more than there's a lot more to the select statement than just this simple part but this is the basic simple part that we start with so if we were to look at one of our database tables, and we're going to work with the vendor table today, um, there is, um, the way this is named is with the database name, which is AdventureWorks 2014, followed by a period, followed by um, a schema name. And think of a schema as just a collection of tables. So within a database, you can have a s multiple schemas, and each of those schemas can have multiple tables. So it's just a way to categorize and organize uh, the database itself. And so uh, this table is in the purchasing schema, and it's called vendor. So this is just a few rows from this table. The columns are named this way, business entity ID, account number, name, and so forth. And we'll, when we get into database design, we'll talk about how you create 
tables and how you name these columns, but these are the columns. So when we say that in the select statement we specify one or more columns, we would simply specify the columns here that we wanted to return in the data in the, in the result set. The rows are the actual rows of data, so think of this as rows and columns, kind of like a spreadsheet. Now we'll be working, we'll be working in, a, in a subsequent video on how we filter out the rows to only get particular rows. Today we're going to be focused on how we filter out the columns to only get particular columns. So we'll be pulling back all of the rows for the data for, the, for this table, but we'll, we'll restrict it to certain columns. So here's an example, select name, name is one of our columns, from AdventureWorks 2014.purchasing.vendor. Now sometimes we have a database column name that is a, the same thing as a keyword in SQL, and if that's the case we can enclose this in square brackets. So with and we will talk a little bit about the asterisk. You see a little asterisk here. Asterisk is a way to say, give me back all of the columns. So instead of having to type every one of them, I can just put the asterisk in. So let's try this out real quick. And hopefully you've got the AdventureWorks 2014 data, database restored the way we did in video two. And we can go ahead and do select. And we're going to use the asterisk that we just learned about, which says, give me all the columns from... And what table are we getting them from? Well, we'll get, uh, you'll notice there's a little bit of IntelliSense here, or type ahead. And it knows which databases are available. And it also knows which schemas are available. This one happens to be in purchasing. And vendor is the actual table name. And how did I know that? Well, if you go open this up, you'll notice that this is the database name, AdventureWorks 2014. And if you'll go down here and look under the purchasing schema, it has these tables right here, and one of them is vendor. So I have this SQL statement, and if I hit the execute button right here, it will go to the database and run the query and bring back the data. Now if I were to put name in here, now name is a SQL keyword, so when I try to run this, I may get a funny error. I don't. But you'll notice it's highlighted in blue, and that's because it's a keyword. So with some database management systems, you, you've got to be careful about that. But you can just simply put that in square brackets. Or uh, single quotes um, works in some cases, but in, in SQL Server, we want to use the square brackets. This also works if your column names have spaces in them. So let's go back to select star. And let's look at some of the other columns. So we have name and credit. So let's say we want a name and credit rating. So we could say name and credit rating like this. And then hit execute and you would get those two columns back. Now the order that you specify the columns will be the order that the data is returned in. So if we say credit rating comma name and I'll leave that other credit rating in there just so you can see what happens. So you'll notice that it pulled, it repeated the column, and the reason it did that is because this is more than just specifying which columns we want to go get the data from. It specifies which columns we want displayed in the results. And if you repeat the column name over and over again, you'll just get multiple instances of it in your result set. So, let's take this out and just do it like this. Now you also can do something called aliasing, and I will show you how that works. So let's say we don't, we're, let's say we're creating a report and we don't want to actually have credit rating run together as one word. Well, the column name that we're getting back the column, we have to specify the column that we're getting the data from, which is credit rating. If we say credit rating as, and then we give it a name in single quotes, just how we do strings in SQL Server, watch what happens if I execute that. Now the column header comes back as credit rating, like that. 
and you could put anything at all you wanted in here like this. So we could say as and our name, for example. So this is aliases. This is what we uh, know as column aliases or field name aliases. So we're just simply changing the the display name here. We haven't changed the actual name in the table. The other thing you can do is open this up in the design in the object explorer over here under purchasing vendor and open up uh, the columns and you'll see all the columns listed here okay all right so that's enough for t for right now we'll come back and talk more about how we can filter the rows we've talked about how we can specify the different columns that we want displayed in our result set so that'll be the next video that we do